Greetings, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're here on Facebook or on YouTube, I'm glad you've joined us today uh, for a time of teaching and scripture reading and prayer. If this is your very first time with us, uh, I want to extend a special welcome to you. I'm glad you're here. Whether you stumbled upon us or somebody invited you and you showed up intentionally, I'm glad you're here. I hope it's not going to be your last time. And if we haven't met before, my name is Johnny, and I serve as the pastor here at Huddle Discover United Methodist Church. Uh, as with last week, I want you to stay tuned as soon as we're done with the sermon and prayer. Stay tuned for the announcements because we have more regathering news for you. I know many of you are looking forward to that. Can't wait to share that with you. So uh, important updates on that at the end, so stay tuned. We're in our series called Living the Resurrection. And it's a little known fact for many people that Easter is not just a day. In fact, traditionally in the church, Easter is a whole season. We're currently still in the season of Easter. Easter Sunday, the first Sunday of Easter, begins that season, uh, but we continue on in that season until about mid-May when we hit Pentecost. So we are in the season of Easter. The joy of Easter sustains us until the Holy Spirit can lead us at Pentecost into the next phase of experiencing the kingdom of God together. And that's kind of what this series is all about. It's about living the hope and the joy that we have in the resurrection, the hope and the joy that we find in Easter. Because the real question of our faith is, how does this help me live today? Not in a selfish, how does God come alongside my plans and make me successful, but how does my faith actually have hands and feet in the world? Is it more than just ideas? Is it more than just words? Is it more than just tradition? How does it help me live today? Because in the end, it's all about application. It's about more than just understanding what happened. It is about really living the resurrection right here and right now. Last week, we began this series by looking at Thomas's first encounter with the risen Jesus and how his desire is all of our desire. When it comes to our faith, we want something real. We want something substantial, not just empty words, which means our faith must manifest something real, something substantial for a world that is desperate for something to believe in. This week, we're going to look at a story similar to last week's story, but from a different gospel in order to emphasize a point that Jesus is trying to make. What's in store for us today is a graceful yet challenging lesson in what it means to be a follower of Christ. You ready for it? Let's go. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why, why does doubt rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, they asked him, do you have anything? He asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, meaning the Holy Spirit, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with that power from on high. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week we read John's account of this story, this very same story. Now we're here reading Luke's version of that locked room encounter with the resurrected Jesus. 
Now, while Luke doesn't emphasize the locked doors as much as John does, nor does he single out Thomas as the frightened and skeptical one, there is a similarity between these two Gospels. There's a similarity in the tension and confusion and sort of flailing hope in the room where the disciples were. They were gathered there together in a single room. What room was that? Could it have been the upper room, the very room they shared with Jesus at the Last Supper before he was arrested and crucified? Or maybe it was some other gathering place or some other home where the hurting and the hopeless gather together when they don't know what else to do. And what were they doing there? Were they hiding from somebody? John seems to think so. But what were they doing to pass the time? Were they pooling their individual and shared experiences together? Were they reminding each other of what they had seen or heard? Were they telling stories in order to comfort one another in their time of grief? Were they trying desperately to convince themselves that hope was still alive? That no matter how unbelievable Jesus' claims were, that they were, in fact, true, hopefully. Well, regardless of what they were doing or how much or how little hope they had in Jesus' words actually being true, Jesus appears to them anyways. Peace be with you, he says. Touch me and see that I am real and that I am here with you. Here's lesson number one for today, and this might be for all of you, and this might just be for some of you. The power of God in Jesus does not depend on you. The power of God does not depend on you. Your faith is not God's fuel. God is powerful and sovereign on his own. And if your faith or your hope is indeed small, if you are in the midst of doubt and confusion and flailing hope yourself, if you find yourself locking your, you know, your spiritual self away for fear of what it might mean for your life in the world or you know, for fear that it may not be true after all, Jesus greets you with peace. Your doubt does not disqualify you. Jesus' invitation is not for you to depart in the midst of your doubt. Jesus' invitation is for you to draw near. Touch me and see, he says. Now, the emphasis last week is similar to this week's. Jesus wants to ground his disciples' faith in the reality of his presence, in the concreteness of his being. He is actually standing in front of you. He's not a figment of your imagination. He's not a glimpse of what you had hoped for. The resurrected Jesus is real to his disciples. He is announcing, not just with his words, but with his physical IRL proof that he is real. Not just a memory, not just a myth, not just a hope, but real. And the power of grace and love and life itself is, in fact, reality itself. Which brings us to lesson number two. The gospel, the life of faith, has to be grounded in reality. The gospel, the life of faith, has to be grounded in reality. It must. That's why we've dwelled on this moment here from two different gospels for two whole weeks. If the gospel is not grounded in reality, if it's not made manifest in our life, if there is no living proof of the hope that we have in Christ, then what we are most likely to do with our faith is to turn our message, to turn the good news, to turn the gospel into one only of the hereafter, only of the sweet by and by, and not of the here and now. See what happens if our faith is not grounded in reality. We run the risk of thinking that all the resurrected Jesus cares about is getting souls into some spiritualized heaven somewhere else sometime later instead of ushering them into heaven here and now. Listen to the way the late and great and incomparable Dallas Willard puts it. He says, The gospel is less about how to get into the kingdom of heaven after you die and more about how to live in the kingdom of heaven before you die. Now let me be clear. This does not dismiss or discount the hope of heaven later. The hope of eternal life in God's presence in perfect harmony in heaven is something that we cling to 
It's a thing that we hope for, not only for ourselves, but it's a thing that we take comfort in for our loved ones who have already departed from this earth. We know, we believe with our whole hearts that they are in God's arms right now as we speak. That whatever it is they suffered from mentally or physically is gone now. They are whole and they are resting in eternal joy with God. We do believe that. And that is not a small part of our faith. It is just not the only part. When Jesus says, touch me and see, he is inviting us to live in the world that he lived in and bring a hope to our reality today and every day. So here's our invitation. For today, it's really like a bunch of questions. I'm going to ask you just a stream of questions because I kind of want to target all of you. Wherever you are in your faith today, I want you to find yourself in these questions. I want you to wrestle with them. And if the first few aren't ones worth wrestling, you know, you've already answered them and you can answer them. Keep going. Eventually, there's going to be a question here that you're going to wrestle with. But these questions are ones that I think the resurrected Jesus, if he appeared in our locked rooms today, would be asking us. They're questions that help us ground our faith in reality, in real life, helps it manifest itself in real, tangible, physical ways, not just for us to grab a hold of, but for others as well. So I hear these questions as invitations. How is your faith real to you? How is your faith real to you? I don't mean like I put up you know, fancy word art from scripture or hymns in my home or I have a certain bumper sticker or something like that. I don't mean that. I mean like real life. How is your faith real to you? What are the marks of Christ on your life? How are you different today than you were before you took Jesus and his ways seriously? What is new or renewed in you? Where would you be today without the witness of God's love and grace in Christ? Where would you be today? In what ways are you living in the kingdom of heaven here on earth? These are questions, I got more, so hold tight, but these are questions that I, I do want you to ponder, but I don't want you to simply ponder. I want you to consider sharing. You can write them down. They can be part of a prayer. If you're really wrestling with how to answer that question, you can use the next week to be praying over those questions and, and see what God reveals to you through the Holy Spirit. But I want you to share your conclusions as well. It could be with those in your home. It could be with a friend or a parent or a child. Call them up, text them, say, hey, I want to just chat a little bit about what you know, pastor said at church has really just been messing with me and stirring, you know, in me, and I want to talk about it, you know, and I want to see what you have to say about it, too. Maybe it'll help me understand where I fit in all of this. Here's some more questions. What can we provide as individuals and as a church? What hands-on proof can we give that Jesus is alive among us? In what ways can we see touch and see? While the pandemic has challenged and changed, at least temporarily, a lot of what we would normally point to, we can still give examples of a heart and a life touched by the grace of our resurrected Lord and Savior. In what ways can we provide tangible proof that Christ is alive among us? How is your faith and experience of God's grace in Jesus Christ pushing you outside of your own bubble to invite and welcome people into the kingdom and living in it here? In what ways is the Holy Spirit challenging you to make your faith more than words? In what ways are you prepared to inspire and partner with the body of faith here at Huddle Discovery or whatever church that you call home to be a beacon of hope and peace in the world? It's kind of the beauty of being a part of a church, right, is that this witness is not your burden alone to bear, it's something that we bear together. How are you prepared to inspire the body of Christ that you are a part of or to partner with the body of faith here at Huddle Discovery or your home church to be that beacon of hope and peace in the world? Because here's the reality. More and more today, and you can see, read any statistic from anybody who does polls and statistics, the, the rate of religiosity in our nation, in the U.S., is just plummeting for all sorts of reasons, but it is. There's doubt, 
disillusionment, loss of hope, rejection of the mission of the church by the world. This is real. More and more people are leaving the church because more and more people find that it is just not substantial. But instead of seeing that, instead of knowing that and being discouraged by that, we can be encouraged because if doubt and confusion and flailing hope didn't stop Christ, then it doesn't stop us either. Here's the good news. We are witnesses to the love of God, to the love that God has poured into us. We are witnesses of God's love, sharing it with each person we meet. We are witnesses to everyone we encounter, children like us, sisters and brothers in God's family. Faith is meant to be more than words. It's meant to be lived. And heaven isn't just somewhere else. It's right here among us. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of scripture that has been passed down over these centuries that has made it through faithful hands and protectors into our hands so that we might read them and find wisdom in the words, so that we might attain to your presence knowledge of you, so that we might experience your grace anew this day. We thank you, God, that even though we doubt sometimes, sometimes whenever we feel discouraged, sometimes when we feel lost in our faith, that regardless of how low we might feel, God, you lift us up. You never stay away from us, God. Instead, you draw nearer to us and invite us once again to touch and see that you are alive and that you are near. We pray, God, that that, that knowledge, that gift of the experience of you through your Holy Spirit, God, lifts us up, strengthens us, encourages us, God, so that we might go and share that very good news with the world who is desperate for something to believe in. May our lives be more than just arguments about why somebody should believe, but rather may our lives live out the proof that your grace has touched us and changed us. That our lives speak for themselves. Let your holiness and your righteousness, let your grace and your love and your mercy, your kindness, God, May those things be the characteristics that people see in us so that we might lift you up and glorify your name for the sake of your word. We pray all these things in the power of Jesus' holy and blessed name. We also pray the words that he taught us to pray. We do that together now as a faithful people by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it's been a joy to be with you. I'm so grateful that you have joined us here uh, on whatever platform you have joined us. I'm just thankful that you came by, uh, and I hope that words of Scripture, words that have been prepared some way, somehow, whether because of me or in spite of me, have blessed you, uh, and that you know God a little bit better today than you did yesterday. A few quick announcements. As promised, uh, our regathering, if you missed the announcement last week or anything in our uh, email newsletter, uh, we are regathering beginning May 9th. We're going to have two services, one at 9.30, one at 11 o'clock, right here in the sanctuary. We're so excited about that. These will be mask-required services. Uh, anybody who comes to our campus, uh, if you are above the age of five, we're going to require to wear a mask. I know there's a lot of people that have questions about that, but uh, I just trust that that's not going to be a barrier uh, to our gathering and, and rejoining together. Uh, so look forward to that. We're going to have children's ministry over in the Discovery Center. It's going to look a little different for those of you that have been a long time part of this church. Uh, before our children would start in the sanctuary and then they would move into uh, the Discovery Center for, uh, for a lesson over there. Now our children's ministry is full time. It's going to be a full blown children's worship service over in the Discovery Center. So that means if you have a child, you will show up. You will take, if you want them to be a part of children's worship, you will take them over to the Discovery Center. Check them in there. Then you'll come to worship over here in the sanctuary, and then you can go uh, and check them out uh, before you go home. I'm so excited about that. Allison and her volunteer team 
uh, and Travis have been working really hard on that, and I'm so thrilled. It's going to be such a joy for our kids. Our hope is that Sunday morning uh, and, and, and church is one of the favorite times and places of our children. We want them to look forward to church each and every week. And this is one of the ways that we're going to do that. We have tons of volunteers uh, that we need in, in regards to that and what's going on here in the sanctuary. We need people to help out with AV, some button pushing and slide changing. We need people to help with our children. Uh, all of those things for some of you might sound perfect for you. If you are, email us. Let us know that you are willing to help. We could use every person out there who is willing to do it. Uh, if any of those things sound overwhelming, you're willing but you're not sure you know how, do not let that be a hindrance. It's super easy to do and we can teach you how to do it. For now, all the information as we have more and as it's updated, you can find all of that on our website, huddodiscovery.org slash regathering. If you haven't checked it out yet, go do so. Uh, and then uh, we encourage you to not only make plans to be there on the 9th if you're, if you're ready for that, uh, but also to consider how you might serve and welcome people back into the sanctuary. If you haven't let yet, hit the thumbs up on this video on Facebook or on YouTube. Hit the little like button. It helps with the algorithms and the video kind of getting dispersed and distributed amongst people that we may not come into contact with otherwise. Hit a comment down below uh, if you haven't already. We'd love to see who's joining us each and every week. And if you're so inclined, hit the share button. Now is, it's been easy, like the easiest time uh, to share your church uh, with your friends, and we love to see you doing that. And if you are brand new here, consider subscribing to whatever channel you're on right now, whether it's the Facebook page or our YouTube channel, so that you can get live updates and notifications anytime new content drops. If you're looking for ways to give to the church, three very simple ways. First is old school. You can write a check, drop it in an envelope, and mail it to the address you see on the screen. You can also give online by going to our website, huddodiscovery.org slash give. There you can do a one-time offering or you can set up a reoccurring offering. A simple way to set it up once and then you'll never forget about it again because it will happen automatically. You can also do it from your smartphone by downloading the Give Plus app. There you can do the very same thing that you can do on our website, uh, set up a one-time gift or a reoccurring offering. Finally, friends, for those of you that are in need of prayer or support, if you want to share a prayer request or a joy with us, if you're looking to take the next step in your faith journey, if you're giving your life to Christ for the first time, first time in a long time, seeking baptism or, or membership, wanting to get connected in a small group, any way that we can be praying for you or supporting you as a church, we would love to know about it. Please email us at prayers at huddodiscovery.org. For now, friends, as we prepare to go about the rest of our day and our week, would you receive these words of blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters. We'll see you next week. <laughs>